Good morning, everyone. I'm Kent Redding, your 2024 Unlock MLS and ABOR president. I don't really have any of my usual mind blowing opening remarks. I just wanted to hop in and say hi and welcome you to our first MLS Power Hour of the Year. These quarterly events are so helpful as we want to make sure you are really making the most of the tools and technology included in your MLS subscription. Attending MLS Power Hours will be important this year because we have lots of new benefits coming your way. Today, we're talking about the awesome matrix design and search updates that were launched this week. My brokerage, Berkshire Hathaway, has been really excited about these changes. If today's demo is your first time seeing them, I promise you are going to love them. We've all been waiting a long time to be able to work within the MLS and add listings from our phone. Having this capability, in addition to the Unlock MLS app, is going to save our membership agents tons of time. Now, like with any update, it's taken me a hot minute this week to get caught up to speed, but I encourage you to get in there and get it all over you. My fave feature so far is the new search module, which is helping me find and share listings way faster than the prior version. So I hope you enjoy the demo. We'll be sending around a recording of today's session this week so that you can share what you've learned with your colleagues. And of course, you can reach out to me or the Unlock MLS staff anytime with any questions. We got your back. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Will Burnham, our Deputy Director of MLS Services, to introduce today's speaker. Thank you so much, Kent. I uh, really, really appreciate the warm welcome. No better way to start off a power hour than uh, with Kent. Um, so good morning, everybody. Uh, just to build off of that introduction and set the stage for our presenter today. Um, you're here at our first power hour of the year. We absolutely love hosting these things. We love to see a healthy attendance. That's really awesome. Um, during today's training, we're going to be showing you the latest and greatest with your Matrix MLS system, which you saw go live just the other day, a couple days ago. Um, and we're here today to give you an in-depth look at the areas of Matrix that have been given a refresh fresh and make sure that you have some context for how to make the most of this functionality in your matrix system. And really most excitingly on our ends, I mean, you'll hear kind of touched on as we go through the the program today and wrap up at the end. You know, this really is setting a stage for further enhancing the system and bringing you some really robust technology within matrix uh, here later on this year. So Without further ado, and to kick this off, I'm going to introduce today's presenter. Uh, CoreLogic's one of top trainers. Dave Marsh, you actually might have seen him if you got a jump start on learning things. The videos we linked on our Matrix message, he's awesome, really, really knows his stuff. And if you have any questions, this is a webinar style, feel free to put it in the chat, put it in the QA box. Um, Dave's going to roll through the presentation, feel like it helps us lock in, and we're going to address those questions at the end there, but keep them coming. And um, Dave, I think I'll turn it over to you and we can get started here. Thank you, Will. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, just really quickly, just to maybe to add what Will was uh, mentioning. Uh, of course, my name is Dave Marsh. Uh, I'm actually one of the original developers of Matrix. So you're all in very, very good hands. I've been with the company literally since the beginning, uh, 20 years now. Uh, but today we're going to be covering uh, the new um, the, the new enhancements to 11.2. I'm also going to give a little bit of insight into uh, the next version of Matrix as well. Again, I'm not going to show you anything, but uh, we have a version 12 uh, that's being released. Uh, nobody really has that yet. But uh, as I go through 11.2, I just wanted to give you a little bit of context as well, just so that you're aware, because we're building on 11.2, uh, obviously, in 12. So I'm going to give you a little bit of context as we go through this as well. Uh, so hopefully everybody can see my screen. Um, I wanted to start out here on the uh, the dashboard just to give you again a little bit of context into uh, where we're we're going. Uh, so this is the uh, the legacy dashboard that you're probably all familiar with. Uh, one of the additions to 11.2 is a uh, matrix modes 
feature. And if you haven't yet explored Matrix, uh, you may not be familiar with this. But again, if you do log into Matrix, and this is what you see, this is the legacy version. Uh, we have a Matrix mode version, and you can access that just by uh, uh, just selecting your name. And you'll see uh, there's a classic mode. And uh, well, well, we're going to switch that off in a second. But the classic mode is essentially cascades through all of Matrix. So the real intention here with, uh, well, not only with 11.2, but I would say everything from 10 point, uh, 10, uh, version 10 going forward um, is to make Matrix a lot more uh, mobile friendly or responsive in design. So uh, the real benefit of that is you're going to see in, in 11.2. But again, we're just continuing to build on that. Uh, so that's what the classic mode does. It essentially takes you back to the legacy mode. So again, can't really see any reason why you'd want to, but if you do want to introduce the... Uh, uh, the uh, the responsive features more gradually. Maybe you're uh, you're in your own uh, workflow, working in the classic mode. You can remain in that. And uh, this is again, this is where the toggle switch is. So if you do want to remain for whatever reason in the classic mode, uh, this is where you would toggle it on and off. So again, you can see here I'm clearly in the classic mode. But by disabling that, that takes me over into the responsive mode. So welcome to the new dashboard. So this is the new dashboard if you haven't already seen it. And as I've mentioned a few times now, this is responsive mode. And what I essentially mean by that is if you are on a mobile device, this is what you're going to see. So again, you can uh, automatically formats to whatever device you happen to be working on. So in this case, it's uh, it's a mobile device. But if I was on my uh, my tablet, uh, it would um, it would respond to that as well. We're not going to go through because essentially all of the functionality that I show you in the uh, in the desktop mode is consistent inside of the uh, the mobile mode. So as I mentioned, this is uh, this is your new dashboard. And it essentially has all of the same functionality that your legacy dashboard is or has, but now it just, of course, stretches to fit the entire uh, viewport. Now, again, it's a bit of a different workflow as far as um, customizing your, well, we used to call them widgets. We, we refer to them now as panels, uh, but you can see here, it's got all the same panels or widgets that you're used to. But if, uh, if you want to move them around and customize your, uh, your screen to, uh, to just have the panels that you'd like in the specific order that you'd like, we've got a uh, edit dashboard button up here. And you can see what that's going to do is it's going to pull out a drawer. And this is going to give me the ability to, again, just toggle on or off whatever panels that I'd like to view. So here, we'll choose maybe a marker watch. So you can see this is where my marker watch currently is. If I want to move it around, uh, just maybe move it down. Here. So this is where we're going to move it from. So these little handles here are what you're essentially going to grab and uh, to move where you'd like those uh, those panels to appear. And uh, and again, logically, this is where you enable or disable panels. So here, I'll take the, uh, the market watch off by disabling it and bring it back on again. All right, so that's the uh, essentially the workflow, the new workflow for customizing your uh, your dashboard. Um, a few other things worth noting. Again, the functionality is still the same that you're used to, just a slightly different workflow. So if, for example, uh, you're going to see this added to some of the panels. Uh, here, we'll use, um, do I have a, my listings, my listings are here, searches, my, Oh, here it is. So here's my listings. Just as an example, we'll use that. Um, what we're doing here is we're showing, well, whatever listings that you want to see uh, up to your top eight. So in this case, just uh, refresh that, see if I have anything. Nope. So I'm just going to switch. If I want to um, if I want to add any uh, any different types of listings, you're just going to turn that around. And, and again, you can choose which type of listings uh, that you want to view. Now, you can also, of course, view more of them, but it's going to show you by uh, by default, it's just going to show you your top eight. Just again, if you're just trying to save a little bit of real estate on your uh, on your dashboard, um, it's just going to show you by default your your, your top eight uh, selected ones. And same thing with the, the hot sheets. Again, all the functionality is still there that you're used to. Uh, you can go in, you can uh, customize your hot sheets the same way that you normally would and, um, and uh, use that in your normal workflow. Uh, one thing I did want to mention as well, if uh, for whatever reason you don't happen to see your news and alerts one day, 
Um, these are only going to show up if you actually have a news and alert to show. So again, if you if you notice that this disappears one day, that's just because there's no news and alerts available. Um, so it's always going to be just like in the legacy uh, version of the dashboard. It's always going to be located up in the top left hand corner. But again, just that's the new feature that we've added is it will uh, it'll essentially disappear if there are no news uh, and alerts to uh, to display to you. All right, so one of the coolest things to the new dashboard is the timeline. So this is the uh, timeline. You're, you're already familiar, actually, with the timeline in, um, in your contact section. So if you're familiar with contacts, you already know that there is a, a timeline that essentially shows you some recent activity for your client's uh, portal. So what this does, it sort of amalgamates, well, not sort of, it amalgamates all of your, uh, all of your client's activity on the dashboard. So first thing, when you uh, log into Matrix and you want to see what type of recent activity there's been in your client's portal, you don't have to go through each individual client uh, like you normally would. Now all you have to do is open up your, uh, your timeline and you can scroll through and uh, view some of that recent activity. Now, I've already done that. So I've added uh, a couple of clients um, uh, previously and uh, just created some activity for them. So we were able to see something. So just as an example, if there's something that I do want to see, uh, I could just, uh, open it up and that will take me in this case right to the client itself, or I can open it up if I want to take a look at this, maybe um, uh, this property in a little bit more detail, I can scroll through the photos. So again, this just gives me a little bit more insight into what it is that my client is doing back inside of, uh, of their portal. Um, one uh, one thing that I will mention as well, this is a manual refresh. Uh, so if there are is any new activity uh, that's been happening, you just come up here and you just uh, select this to manually refresh the uh, the portal for you. You also have the ability to uh, choose which activities that you see. So again, if you're familiar with the, this is a little bit outside the scope of what we're going to be discussing today because it's not a new feature in Matrix, but it is a new feature to the uh, the timeline. Uh, this is where you can choose which actions that you're actually able to view. So with the uh, settings um, with the settings icon here, again, you'll recognize these actions from the portal notification settings. So these are just a, uh, we, we've essentially taken those actions from the client portal and added them to the timeline. So if you're just getting overwhelmed, for example, if you have clients that are maybe always visiting their portal, um, maybe they're doing an activity that is just, again, just overwhelming uh, your timeline just with all of their actions, uh, you can simply just come in here and, uh, and toggle it off, and then you won't get notified for that specific uh, action inside of the, uh, the timeline. So again, just so that you're uh, aware that that's available. Um, just to bring that full circle, let me jump over into the settings. And this is the same area that I was just referring to a few moments ago. Uh, you can see here, so this is the portal notification settings section that you're very, very familiar with. Uh, this is the new, uh, the new area that we've just added, as you can see, display and timeline. So that's exactly the same information that I just showed you a few moments ago. So I can either toggle all of these actions uh, on or off here, or again, I can do that from uh, the section. All right, so jumping into uh, into the the My Matrix section. So one of the other features uh, that we've enhanced is the um, is the uh, uh, My uh, Safe Searches uh, section. So again, has all of the, your safe searches. We haven't changed the content. Uh, we've just really just essentially changed the look and feel. And again, they're uh, they're now displayed as panels. But again, all the same functionality is there. It just really just allows me to work with uh, multiple. Uh, multiple uh, safe searches, and here are my actions up here if I want to do anything with them. But really just uh, changing the look and feel. So again, now it's responsive as opposed to uh, the legacy, which was not responsive. And included in that is the auto email page. So very similar to the safe searches, uh, we've just made it responsive design now. So again, if you are looking at this on a mobile device, it's going to be very, very uh, friendly. And um, one additional, uh, well, we've always had the market updates here. If you're not familiar with the market update, uh, this is just going to allow me to um, update specific, we'll just do both of those for now, uh, specific, um, uh, in this case, auto emails. If I just want to see if there's been any new or updated properties, uh, well, in this case, since the last time that I ran this. So we'll, we'll see if there has been any. 
Yeah, and you can you can see there has been. So again, if I want to see those, um, you know, I can just select uh, select this, and that will take me to those uh, to those properties. So these are the new and um, or new and or updated uh, properties since the last time that I ran that market update. But again, we've always had that available. Normally, you'd see that here. But again, what we've done is we've added this here for all my selected, uh, in this case, auto emails, as opposed to just going through each of them uh, individually. All right, so I'm going to bring you to the uh, the uh, the big one, which is our new search. So if we want to, uh, you know, let me just go back to the legacy uh, search just for a sec. So you'll notice here, if you are using the legacy search, we've added a button here just to try the new search. That's just more of a friendly reminder just to let you know that the uh, uh, the new search has been implemented. So again, if you just find yourself out of habit, just going through any of these uh, legacy search uh, pages. And uh, just as a visual reminder, if you do want to jump over, you can just select that. But of course, I'm just going to go right to uh, search new. Now, this isn't always going to say, uh, eventually, this is not going to say search new anymore. It's probably going to say something along the lines of three panel search, uh, because that's essentially what it is. It can only be new for so long. But this is uh, this is our new three panel search. And uh, as you can see, again, I'm going to assume that everybody is familiar with the legacy search. Uh, this is taken all of the uh, individual legacy search uh, components and merged them all onto one central page. So of course, you can see here very high level, you can see here on the left hand side is my criteria. Uh, my top panel here is my map and below that are my results. So I'm going to take you through and show you each of these individual just kind of break them down and show you what's available. Uh, starting with the uh, so starting with the criteria. So this is where you're going to choose uh, which property type that you actually want to search. So in this case, uh, by default, I'm uh, I'm searching my residential, but again, I can quickly jump to any of the other property types. And along with every property type, I'm gonna get my own unique set of fields. Now, very similar to the legacy search, what we've done is we started you off with, uh, with uh, essentially criteria fields for that specific property type. But again, in, um, in the legacy, what you had the ability to do was go and add onto the uh, the default fields that were included. Well, we've taken that to the next level with the uh, the new criteria. In fact, you don't have to keep any of the default uh, criteria fields. If you want to change it all up and start from scratch, you can uh, you can do that. And that's actually what I've done here with my residential. So I've taken the uh, the default fields that were included with the uh, the residential search and uh, removed all of them and essentially just added my own, which is, again, just uh, just for simplicity, uh, are just a very, very limited number. So the way that I did that was I selected my settings. And again, this is the, uh, the new settings page. So you can see here on the left-hand side, these are the fields in the order that I want them to appear in my criteria. But maybe there's a another one that I'd like to uh, to have. So all I have to do is uh, start typing the the name of the field, and you can see it's in this case garage spaces, and I can add that. And of course, I can remove this uh, or move this to any position uh, where I'd like it to appear. So here we'll put it right underneath the price, and just to show you, that's one way. And I can also add it just by scrolling through uh, the list here. But regardless of which, very very simple and. Um, and again, I'm not going to do it, but just for full disclosure, uh, if I do want to restore the original defaults, so that brings me back to the MLS defaults that were originally there, uh, all I have to do is select to restore the defaults. But again, I'm not going to do that because uh, I've already set up mine. And, uh, and then I'm going to save it. And you can see now it's added all of my, uh, my new fields in the order that I wanted them to appear. So again, that's, again, just high level. Um, one uh, one feature that you may know, if you are a power user, you may notice that it's not here yet. Uh, one of the uh, the additional features that we've added in 12 is the ability to save my criteria. So again, if you're used to saving in the legacy uh, search, if you're used to saving your criteria, maybe there's a, um, I don't know, maybe a certain area. Uh, that you typically search on a regular basis. Maybe all of the properties that you search are for, generally for active uh, properties. Maybe in there in a certain uh, price range. Uh, anyway, the bottom line is in the legacy search, what you were able to do is add all of that criteria into your form. 
and then save that criteria. So the next time that you use that form, it's already filled out for you. And you can tweak it if you'd like, but the, the, main, uh, the main data is already uh, added to the, the fields. Well, again, that's not available in 11.2. It's something that we have added in 12. So you'll see an additional uh, you'll see an additional icon here uh, in 12. When you when you do get updated to 12, you'll see an, an additional icon that allows you to save whatever criteria that you've entered and save that as your default. So the next time that essentially you use this uh, property type form, uh, it will start you off with that criteria. So actually, let's just go ahead and uh, just do a, a quick little search here so I can show you the other components. So we're just going to search for some single family uh, properties maybe between, let's say, a million and 1.2 million. And we'll just do uh, two plus bedrooms and say three plus bathrooms. Okay, and so you can see up top here, we've got 381 matches, uh, 329 matches. And, uh, and again, that's based on the criteria that I've added here. We're not going to go through all of the criteria, but again, well, I'll let you play with that. Uh, but you, you have all the same fields that you have available elsewhere. So you can do it by city, you can do it by your zip codes, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, but for now, we're just going to keep it simple. And because uh, screen real estate is important to me, uh, I want to get rid of this. I've added my uh, criteria. So let's get rid of that. Just open this up a little bit more. And if you do want to uh, zero in on maybe specific areas uh, that you could in, let's say, for example, the legacy feature, we've got all of that same functionality here in the um, in the um, uh, three panel search map, but that's all essentially hidden underneath this uh, this drop down. So you can see here, I can add my radius, my rectangle, polygon, uh, freehand, and I don't want to say this is new. This is something we've always had, but it's kind of been hidden on the uh, the map itself, but it's not new. We've always had it, but we've just made it a lot more accessible. So if you want to uh, measure the distance between, uh, well, really between anything, um, this essentially allows you to do that. So here, I'll show you actually. So what you can do is just draw. So if you have a, a client who's maybe looking for, well, how far something is between two points, um, you can just add that here. And again, just as I showed you a few moments ago, you still have all those other um, uh, shapes that are available and to using the exact same way. So we'll just draw a really quick radius here just to show. All right, so now I've got my, uh, what do I have? My 251 properties, that's great. And again, as I mentioned, all the same functionalities there. So again, if there's a specific properties that I want to um, I want to select, I have my single checkbox icon here. I've got my multiple checkbox icon here. I'll do a couple here for you just to show you how that works. And if there's a group, again, a group of properties, uh, I'll use my multiple. Again, this is not new. This is a functionality we've we brought over. So I've got my 12 uh, selected of my 251 properties. Um, here's what's different though. So again, if you're familiar with the legacy, uh, you know that by selecting any of these uh, properties on the map, it would open up a little thumbnail. And on that thumbnail, there would be a link to the, uh, the, full, uh, the full agent view of that property. So what we've done here is when you select a property, it's going to open up now a preview window. So this is a preview window and I'll get into that in a second. Find a nice property. So this is going to, uh, again, just give me some high level information about this property. And if I want to take a look at these photos in a little bit more detail, I can open up a photo, um, a photo collage or a mo uh, mosaic. So in this case, again, uh, I can just cycle through and uh, I need to see whichever uh, property that I'm interested in a little bit more detail. All right. So moving on temporarily from the map, again, let's take a look at the. Um, uh, take a look at the uh, results down at the bottom. So one quick way of doing that, well, here, I'll show you the slow way of doing it first. So you can just grab hold of this little handlebar, uh, bring that up manually. But a quick way is just select that uh, uh, that uh, expand icon here. And now you're just looking at your, uh, your single line uh, grid. So again, I should mention all of the functionality that you're used to in the uh, the legacy has been imported over for the um, for the results. So this is your default. This is going to show me in this case all of my uh, single line, but I, I do have some uh, some additional uh, views that are available. So in this case, if I want to see the gallery view, 
go through the gallery view. Uh, it's worth mentioning since I'm here in uh, 12, we've also added a thumbnail view. So it's essentially all of this same information that you have on the single line, but with a uh, with a thumbnail photo as well. So I'm going to get into that just in a, in a few more moments as well. So again, we've got the um, we've got the uh, the sort orders. So you, again, you'll be familiar with that in the refine area of the legacy. So we can sort these. Uh, but this is the main one that I want to show you. So the customization. So again, as you know, or hopefully know, in the legacy version of uh, the search, you are able to customize your single line grid. So it's really just showing you the, the fields that you're interested in or your client's interested in. Because again, um, the, uh, the the default ones just may not be relevant. So what we're, uh, we're able to do, we're able to do the same thing, but just a lot more efficient. And it's exactly the same as I showed you with the criteria. So when I select the uh, settings, you can see here on the left-hand side, these are all the fields that I currently have displayed. So in this case, if some of these are just maybe not you know, relevant to me or to my client, uh, all I have to do is uh, remove them by selecting the, um, the X. And again, in the same way, if I do wanna add a field, uh, just select it here. And then you can see, just add it to wherever you'd like it to appear in your display. And um, I'm not gonna save this, but again, if I wanted to, um, I could save it as uh, a fresh name. So my residential or call it whatever you'd like, if it's like bills display or whoever it is that you're uh, saving it for, you can, uh, you can add that. And then when you do have it saved, this is where it's going to be saved to. So any of your custom displays will all be listed in here. I'm just going to keep it for my for the um, the default one at this point, but all of your custom ones will be uh, will be added here as well. Um, I also did want to mention that, uh, and I'm going to show you this in a second. But in the uh, the new version, the Matrix 12 version, uh, what happens when you select the MLS number is it's going to open up just in the same way that any of these do. For example, um, in line with the three panel search. So you can see this is all in line. This is all in line. What happens currently in 11.2 is when you select this, it opens up into a separate tab. So again, it still has all that same agent uh, uh, view information that you're used to, just opening up in a different tab. So what we've done in 12 was we've taken this and we've integrated it in, again, with the three panel search. When you So when you do select this, it's going to open up the exact same way as this does in line with the, um, uh, with the three panel search. All right, same thing. Uh, if I do want to take a look at any of these in a little bit more detail, um, all I have to do is select, and this is going to open up my preview panel in the same way that it did with the uh, with the map. So again, if I just want to get some high level information about this property, you can see it's got the uh, the MLS number down here in the uh, the bottom. That's again going to in this version, it's going to open up into a tab. In the uh, the next version, it actually opens up inside of the uh, inside of the three panel search. All right, so getting into, uh, you're probably wondering where the button bar is. Again, if you're familiar with the legacy search, uh, you're familiar, you're very familiar, I'm sure, with the button bar. The button bar essentially has all the functionality of your search results. So anytime that you do select properties to uh, work with, I'll just select these here, uh, then typically the button bar would light up and you have access to those additional features. So in, uh, in, in Matrix 11.2, what we've done is we've, uh, We've uh, removed the button bar altogether, so no more button bar, and we now have action buttons. So you're going to see the commonly used actions just right here at the top. So you can see I've got my print, I've got my save functionality, so I can save this as a new search, I can save it as a speed bar shortcut, uh, whatever criteria I mean I used for this is uh, now saved as a speed, speed bar shortcut. I, I can send this either as an email or as a uh, an auto email, and I'll come to that in a sec, and uh, my CMAs. And these are all of the additional actions, again, that you're probably familiar with from the button bar. Now, one thing I will mention is we've been building this, uh, as you can probably tell, we've been building this for a very, very long time. So what, we, uh, what we're continuing to do is add on to it. And you've seen a couple of examples of that, as I mentioned, in the criteria where we're, we're going to be adding the save, um, save your initial uh, field data as uh, your default in the... Um, in the display, we're going to be adding that inline display. So there are some additional actions that we have to add as well. We've actually already added, but it's just not available in this version. So if you uh, start using the uh, the um, the new search, 
and you absolutely love it, like most do, uh, and you want to continue using it, but you find that there's some functionality that's just not quite there yet. For example, you can see carts, just as an example, is not yet available in, uh, in 11.2. It is in 12, but it's not yet available here. If there is some functionality that you, you're used to using in the legacy version that's not yet available in 11.2, we have a switch to classics option here. So what you're just going to do is you're going to set uh, select switch to classic, and what you're going to see is that takes all of the criteria that I added back in the three panel search and it brings it over. And you can see here, it's also selected all of my uh, properties. So I don't actually have to do anything different. So all I have to do now, if I do want to use carts, I can continue to use those. It's seamless. It's just really essentially doing the heavy lifting for you. So you don't have to come back into the legacy mode and re-enter all of that criteria, reselect all those properties. All you have to do is go back and, uh, and again, switch to classic and that will bring over all of that uh, information to um, uh, to the legacy. Um, oh, actually, you know, just while I'm here, I um, want to mention as well, so right now, um, the this is taking you back to a legacy version. So one really cool thing that you have to look forward to in, uh, in 12 is we've added a new, again, if you're familiar with the um, uh, the direction, driving directions. Here in the legacy version, you can print out uh, your driving directions and take them uh, with you. This is a feature that we built many, 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 many years ago and hasn't really been updated until now. So in the new version, uh, which you'll receive in 12, when you select uh, driving directions, what it's going to do is it's going to, um, uh, it's going to Every, do everything within the three panel search. But in addition to that, it's going to give you an option to export your driving directions to your mobile device. So often when uh, when you do crew driving directions, you don't necessarily want to bring a printed piece of paper along with you. This is going to export it to your mobile device so you can actually follow the directions in real time on your mobile device. So that's another cool little feature that we've uh, that we've added in uh, inside of 12. And uh, here, let's go back to, you know, just do a quick little search here. Just to show you one other quick little thing. Just wanted to get down to a, uh, a manageable number of properties. Uh, just to show you again with auto email. Uh, so this is again, all in line, but all the same functionality that you're used to is um, is here as well. So again, it looks a little bit different, but the same uh, functionality is, is there. Uh, if let's say, for example, I want to send to somebody specific, all I have to do is start typing in and it uh, dro uh, drops down some auto suggested uh, contacts. So in this case, I would just select that contact and add my subject line again, mandatory. And then uh, once you've done all that, Select your uh, options because that's where uh, that's where you're going to find all of the additional options that you're used to uh, seeing by default in the uh, the legacy auto email. All right, so the very very last uh, thing that I wanted to point out this is again not new functionality, but I did want to show you. Uh, you did see this on the um, on the dashboard. There was a um, there was a news item that was released. If you haven't already seen this. Uh, there's a news item that was released, and uh, there are some videos that were added uh, here, just essentially covering uh, some of the new features <clears throat> that I, I, I just showed you. So you can definitely access those uh, from there, but I also wanted to show you that those have also been added to the help section. So just underneath the... Um, uh, the uh, the CoreLogic video tutorials. Uh, what I've done is I've gone ahead and added those videos. So everything that you've seen me cover here uh, is also available here. And uh, just as an example, uh, do this one. So this is the matrix modes one. I, again, I covered that earlier just to show you that you could switch, uh, essentially toggle back and forth between the responsive and the uh, the classic mode here. So that's just an example of some of the, um, some of the features that are, are covered here. So again, uh, you do have this video that is uh, is being recorded currently, but if you do want to jump back to just very quick um, quick tip videos uh, for the, uh, the the eleven point two features, I uh, just come back and take a look uh, from this section here as well. And that's all I have for you. So I'll open that up for any questions uh, that anybody has. Yeah, Dave, thanks for uh, 
that's <clears throat> just such a such an efficient demo. And reminder, everybody, we're sending a recording. Uh, I know we covered a lot there, so just keep that in mind. There's going to be plenty of opportunity to practice this. And of course, these videos that, that Dave linked as well is going to be helpful. Um, so just running through some that's in there. We're going to do our best to get to all of them the best that we can. Um, one thing that that's caught my eye early on, and I saw some people saying the new one's super zoomed in, or you go to go to the um, search and you know font size this and that if you could show the little double a icon in the top right mm -hmm. um this is a nifty feature that they give you three different font sizes large medium small essentially um and keep in mind especially on the legacy system i know i had my default chrome browser zoomed in to 125 again matrix is making these changes to naturally set a full screen instead of having to zoom and get rid of that white space so you might have some areas of the system where that zoom makes sense and then now we've got a responsiveness where you're going to want to press that that double a button and find that sweet spot for browser zoom plus font size and dave if you can just kind of yeah click through a few times there so one, one thing i will add to that as well in 12 what we've uh, what we've done is we've added a uh, an additional feature that so you see all this empty space um essentially the padding uh right above and below the menu items so in uh, in 12 we've we have one additional icon that's uh, being shown here as well that's going to um collapse that uh, that header so that gives you even more space so Again, to to your point, one of the um, one of the some of the feedback that we've got is a lot of information we want to show, and this is one of the reasons why I came to this particular page because this is generally speaking the page that most uh, want to see as much information on as possible. So this would be a good example. So if I did want to maximize the amount of information that I'm showing here, um, you would see even more in 12 because again, what we do is we collapse the um, the the, uh, the header. That's great. Yeah. So yep. find that, click through those, find that sweet. It's going to depend on, again, the mobile responsiveness. It's opening up a lot of, a lot of newness to how you use the system. Historically, until this, it's been desktop is there for Matrix to use. And now we're layering on some mobile opportunities here. And again, setting that foundation to further, um, further enhance this system. Um, and since I saw a little bit of back and forth, um, Dave did a great job. And, and I touched on it a bit ago of, of kind of teeing up to Matrix 12, the next version of this update, and really closing the loop on some of these search enhancements and other parts. But just to clarify, this is all 11.2. This is the latest and greatest Matrix version. When he's referring to the switch to classic, to the legacy mode, that's still in your system. Uh, we saw that old dashboard as the starting points, and particularly with search, the default search form, when you just go to search, if you don't click the new menu button, you're going to see the air quote classic, the legacy version. 11.2 is bringing you both. And, and this is really the first iteration of bringing the search more forward. And 12 is going to build on that new search experience. And just wanted to clarify, we're mentioning 12. We're really, really excited. That's going to be later this summer. Um, and we are very, very excited to, to get that Q&A going or QA going so we can uh, keep building the momentum of these first round of updates here. And thank you for some of, uh, love to see the collaboration of colleague to colleague answering some of those questions. Uh, really appreciate y'all doing that. We wanted to, to keep Dave uh, focused on the presentation as we were going here. Um, so give me a moment. Let me just catch up to what questions have come through. Talked about, can't swap the map and the results, but essentially dragging the results to where it's full screen or dragging them down to where it's all map. That's the type of functionality and customization that pending on, depending on how you're searching, even in the moment, not searching the same every time. That's what the system lets you do. And of course, when you put your criteria in, swipe that panel away, one of the three panels of this three panel search and boom, you're right there and you can go full single line grid results or just this map view here and, and be front and center. All righty, let's see here, touched on 12, bear with me. Um, classic going away, so the classic version's there, even as we get to 12, that that deep call, the classic search is going to stay there. Um, you know, think of it away as you know, we really, really encourage you all to, to try these new searches, try these mobile responsive features, but 
we're excited to work with CoreLogic to bring you the latest and greatest. Dave, you know, it's funny to hear that Dave is the brainchild of Matrix from uh, many years ago. So I think we've got the top tier expert here, but uh, it's fun to see him and his team embrace the changes and and really open up a lot of modernization in the system. But all that to say that classic view is is there. Um, and it's, you know, that that dual, the dual thread of search, if you will, is, is going to be there even as we get to 12. Um, Dave, let's give one more demo of how to organize those dashboard panels, if you don't mind. We had a couple questions come in. They may be, uh, I know it was early on, and let's just, it's pretty straightforward. All right, so on the uh, the edit dashboard section, uh, there's a button on the top uh, right-hand corner here, and that's going to open up a drawer to the left. And you can see here, this is, uh, this is showing me all of my currently enabled uh, panels. We again, we for anybody who is uh, who is a little bit late coming, these are uh, these are essentially the same as the widgets that you see in the legacy version. Uh, we call them panels now, and uh, with um, with the uh, the left hand side with these toggle switches. Obviously, if it's toggled on, this is something that we're going to see. If it's toggled off, then it removes it from the um, from the dashboard. So if you want to uh, customize the order that they appear, this is where the handles on the right hand side come in. So in this case, we'll add the uh, eProperty watch just down here at the bottom. We're just going to take that and we'll add this to the maybe third position here. Is that the third position? Yeah, down to the third position. So now you can see here. So it does it in real time. And uh, and then of course, to uh, remove my drawer, just to close that up. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, thank you for showing that. Appreciate that question, Elizabeth. Um, and yes, like again, legacy is classic, you know, kind of some semantics in terms of that, um, in terms of when we hear that. And yes, David, yeah, the first four is one, two, three, four column. News and alerts will always be locked there. And it will disappear, though, when there's not a message as Dave addressed. So that's basically the logic. And my listings, as you can see here, that's number five on that, that order of that edit dashboard list, if you want to get in the weeds with that logic a little bit. Um, I know we're bouncing around here. There's a great questions shows. You can go between dashboard and search like it's nothing. Uh, let's hop back to search, Dave, if you don't mind. And um, the same functionality in terms of, you know, multi-select cities, uh, multi-select options. Let's add that because the city question specifically, let's add city to our, our criteria form here. Oh, it's already there. Wonderful. Yeah, it's already there. Perfect. Let's go to that field on the actual search form. And let's just show a multi-select option to where you're saying city of Austin and Round Rock or whatever two cities um, as we run this search. And let's just kind of see a search field in action here. Uh, and as you saw, if you wanted to pull up city as you wanted to, you certainly could. Where, where, where am I searching? Let's do Austin. Mm -hmm. Select. And let's do Round Rock just for a multi-select. Uh, oh. To put another one. Yeah, there's a question. Can you select more than one city? You know that logic we're very used to in the current search form. Oops. All of that. Call it. Uh, yeah, every city. There we go. Uh, the so what, current. What's called ra Round Rock. Round Rock. Yeah. I wish I was close enough to Austin that I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> Come through sometime. Uh, perfect. Yeah, Round Rock. So point being. It's uh, as opposed to just typing in on the old, the, the legacy classic search form. It appears you can type it in at the top. You can scroll, you select it. You can select this city, not this city. All of that basic, robust MLS search criteria that makes the MLS such a robust system that is in this new search. And um, since it is new functionality, you know, let us know what what's catching your eye. And we want to hear from you as you kind of unpack those those traditional things in the new form. Um, all right, Dave, did anything pop up through just these questions or just last minute things that, um, that caught your eye that you want to cover? Um, <laughs> I'm kind of opening up a can of worms here. We'll, we'll end on a, on a teaser. How about that? So the big, uh, the big thing that we're working on right now or have worked on, uh, that is going to be released as part of 12. I'm not going to get into it in any more detail, but we've done essentially for input, uh, the same for input as we've done for search. So we've uh, completely rebuilt it from the ground up. It's absolutely awesome. Um, it's awesome. It's uh, so I'm excited to show.
when the time comes, but uh, but I'll leave that uh, leave that little teaser for you. So for as much of a significant change as uh, search has been, we've done the uh, the same with uh, with input. Wonderful. Yes. And we're very, very excited. I can't speak from just the, the early looks at it. It really, we hear a lot of feedback from you all. It's fair feedback about how long it takes to input a listing. Um, we love the data. We love it there, but CoreLogic is really put a lot of heart and soul into making that input module a, a lot more robust and a lot more efficient in a lot of ways. So we and can't, I would add, I would yeah. add to that user uh, or our responsive design as well. Yeah. So this is something that you can now do from your mobile device. So that, that was the big thing. Exactly. Um, so, well, I know there's a lot of specific questions. That is excellent. Um, just to not get too in the weeds, um, want to to let us just kind of zoom out here. I think we'll we'll start to wrap up the the derm. But for those who have those very specific questions, our team is ready and eager to answer those. So please reach out to our support channels, whether a phone call or chat or drop us an email and say, hey, can you reach back out? Um, let's run a specific new search with you. We want to. We want to welcome this with you and think out loud with you, you know, explore it as you are finding out and kind of going through those things. Um, we're in full feedback mode and we all, and we always are, but especially with these new things, we like to hear what naturally clicks, what's a little more awkward, what's not quite as, you know, naturally connected. And again, with these matrix updates coming later this year, um, there is more and more momentum to build on this. So we encourage you all to get in there and, and uh, let us know what you what you're seeing and feeling. Um, and Dave, I think you can stop screen sharing, and um, we can turn off your your camera and go behind the curtain, as our team says. And thank you so much, Dave, for uh, for joining us. And um, just to kind of wrap up, and I know we're wrapping a little early, but want to get you that that time back and let you ask those specific questions to our team. Um, Thank you for joining us today. We really hope you gain some new tips and strategies that you can plug into your business. And again, if you didn't get to those questions, please, please reach out. We love to address those one-on-one -on -one with you. Um, we've got Matrix Open Labs scheduled for really the next couple of weeks. Uh, you, everybody knows Jack Seller is on our team. He's been really, in the last first couple of days, uh, jumping in the weeds here with this. So um, let us know, you know, have those questions and look for those training opportunities. Again, we're going to be giving a lot of those, especially with those later updates. Um, and again, this is setting a foundation. Sorry, my dog is going wild back there. Um, search, search will continue to build on a mobile centric approach. And most importantly, that ad edit module will be getting an overhaul to let you efficiently input those listings. And again, don't worry, we're going to have a lot of materials and trainings as we lead into that and, and start that new chapter of MLS. And then otherwise, in the short term, exciting news, uh, Kuba Casa is a new MLS product that is floor plan centric. We know floor plans are super important. Uh, the board has really worked to bring you a very robust tool that helps you with that and make it easy to get very valuable data for our users and, and into our system. So we're really, really excited. Keep a very close eye on, on that timeline. It's, it's soon to give you that tool. Um, another Next week, we're going to have a minor update to our rental listing distribution. Zilla Rentals is going to be an opt-in through MLS input. We're going to have some communications on that. So uh, just kind of begin early preview here as you join our MLS Power Hour. And we send a survey. We really want to hear your feedback. What other topics do you want to have at these power hours? What can we bring to you in this fun, informative and exciting format? And otherwise, uh, we really do take a close look at that feedback. So please keep an eye out for that. There's going to be a recording. And without that, I think we'll have our wonderful uh, video team play us out here and y'all have a wonderful rest of the day and week.